Good afternoon from New York. You're watching News Always On. I'm Castle. President Trump says he is hopeful that he will be able to develop a good relationship with Russian President Vladimir Putin after they meet early next week, adding that he believes the meeting could be very productive. Trump said, quote, He's representing Russia, I'm representing the United States. So, in a sense, we are competitors. He's not my enemy. Hopefully, someday, maybe he will be a friend. Trump says he plans to ask Putin again about the Russian inter interference in the 2016 election. They will also be talking about Russia's involvement in Syria and Ukraine and about arms control. The White House has said it does not um, anticipate any major deals to be reached during this meeting. Two days after its original deadline, the Trump administration announced today that it has complied with the first part of a court order to return the nearly 3,000 migrant children separated from their parents in recent months. Administration officials had been under a mandate to reunite, to reunite the youngest minors or migrants under the age of five with their families by Tuesday. And by Thursday morning, which is today, they say that they have reunited 57 of the 103 children who fit the criteria. The Taj Mahal is turning brown and green, and Indian officials are arguing over whose fault is this. India's Supreme Court has made a statement threatening to demolish the Taj Mahal or, or to shut it down. The statement came in response to the lack of action taken to prevent and remedy the discoloration of the monument. The Taj Mahal is deemed as one of the world's most famous monuments. Built in the 17th century, it is one of the world's seven wonders. Over the past three decades, the building has degraded, largely due to particulate matter given off by industrial units in its vicinity and the Yamuna River that contains considerable waste at the west side of the Taj Mahal. As a result, it houses a breeding ground for insects whose excrement corrodes the building's marble. Here is the second part of the story as promised. With 40 pounds on her back and no cash in her pocket, Yanis Ho, also known as the Lady Forest Gum on skates, skated 6,000 miles across the country all the way from Miami to New York and New York to the West Coast. Just a few days ago, I was able to sit down and talk to her for a little bit about what led her to this idea. As a 23-year-old myself, I really adore you how you are actually doing something for the a favor for the world, like you say, like how you are doing this and people actually felt like, hey, there's still hope in this world. And what you're doing right now is coming from uh, the right place, I would say, because it's your passion, like you're not doing it for money, for branding. Maybe that will lead you to that. What do you say about all these things? Like, what's your viewpoint on this? Um, so, yeah, right now, right now, I'm not making money out of it. Even the scholarship that um, I am raising funds for, mm -hmm. for girls' education in Kenya and Uganda. I'm not gaining a dollar from it. But this is truly just my passion, um, something so close to my heart. And um, I enjoy every moment. I'm very happy. I can't be more happy. And I feel like I'm not making any money right now, but I'm the richest person in the world. In the heart. Yes. Okay. And. Uh, Hopefully, eventually, it will lead to, um, it will become an avenue to earn money. But if not, I'm wor not worried about it because I'm very fulfilled just completing this mission and inspiring people. Um, you know, when people tell me that they're inspired, they've decided to make a life change and um, have decided to go on a different path, have done this and done that because they're inspired by my story, and that's what I get the high from. So as an Asian woman, like maybe there's some certain expectation from you. Hey, you should hey, graduate, go to school, find a job, get married. And now you're doing this. Um, and yeah, so I'm very lucky to have really supportive parents. Um, I know that a lot of my friends' parents, they you know, pressure them to go to the great, the best school, um, get a degree, and then get a job that will make big bucks, big money right away. And I, I know a lot of my friends are not happy. They don't, they're still searching for what they want to do. They, um, they do what they do. They do a security job because of the social expectation, because they think that money is our goal. Um, but I would say to me, like money is, shouldn't be our priority. 
there are more things in life that matters more um, than money. And uh, I think first and foremost, we have to be happy um, uh, and do what we love to do. And when you do what you love to do, eventually it will lead you, the money will find you. So good, so good. It's like when you pursue, and in this case, your passion, the money will follow. And so like pursuing money and then in the end, you're like draining, like you're just working for money. Yeah, and I've seen so many of people that just have lived their life, half of their life being miserable. They don't know what they're chasing after. And just because, you know, in this society, our expectation is the more money, the better, the more, the better. And, you know, sometimes less is better, less is more. Yeah, wow. So you were talking about um, how you were raising funds for this scholarship, you call it the Blader Scholarship and mm -hmm. through this um, One Girl Can yes. charity and so far you have raised about like $11,000. Like, can you tell me more about it? Yeah, so um, the Bladers has seen on my shirt, yes. it stands for a female rollerblader. So there is this female empowerment message behind it and I'm partnering with this organization called One Girl Can because we both believe that one girl can achieve so much. Mm -hmm. Just one girl. And, um, you know, in Kenya and Uganda, especially those two countries, child marriage is still very prevalent. Um, I've always had a passion to end child marriage. And mm -hmm. I believe that education is the single most important key to, um, to break the vicious cycle. For, to provide an opportunity to for these girls to learn about their potentials, what they could potentially become. Um, they're more than a reproductive system. They're, they're more than um, just a just an object to reproduce. Yeah. Um, but you know, this is still the social stigma in a lot of these countries and I want more girls to be able to dream, to be to dream bigger, to be who they want to be. Mm -hmm. So that's why um, I founded this the Blazer Scholarship to mm -hmm. sponsor them a lot of these girls who go to school, to finish secondary school and the organization will help them to find meaningful employment after. Oh, so good. So, what are your plans for the future? You are not pursuing any kind of education right now, you are just going around. Like, what are your plans in the future? Like, what do you want to become? Um, I, so I want to continue um, the Blazer's channel, my own social media platform to continue to share positive stories because a lot of times we see the negative stories on, on uh, news media that tells us about shooting, about crimes. It's quite draining sometimes. Mm -hmm. And that's not all the world is about. You know, there are a lot of good stories that we've ne neglected, we've lo overlooked. And that's what I want to pick up. Um, just sharing good stories, positive energy, and uh, bring the good people into the community sharing um, you know this vibes and um, I want to continue doing that at the same time I want to venture into producing documentaries mm -hmm. um, it's still bringing the real-life picture to the audience if I were to ask you to say something to maybe a person of your age or even older who are pursuing their goals but find it hard or they're not doing anything what would you say to them I would say a lot of times we we give ourselves an excuse we're not ready we're not ready we um there's still a lot we should be prepared for um you know we we give ourselves so much excuses in life and the fact is we'll never be ready mm -hmm. until we set our food and actually um actually doing it that's the only way we'll ever feel ready um yeah the whole time as I was preparing for this, I was telling myself, you're not ready, you're not ready, um, you're not good enough. It was, it's draining to think that way because j not just rollerblading, not just what I'm doing, but in life, a, you know, so a mother, when you're expecting a child, you don't, you've never been a mom. You'll never be ready until your child is born and you'll be ready as it goes and you'll learn what to do with it. and. Yes, the situation comes upon you, no, you just know, you just do it. So good. So I would like to end this with, can you tell our audience 
how can they help you um, by raising this fund um, for the Braider Scholarship that they can help this um, children and women in Uganda and Kenya? Yes, so our goal is to raise $60,000 to sponsor 120 girls to finish the this, this secondary education in Kenya and Uganda. You could help us to raise um, $60,000 through our website uh, www.yaniseho.com and you'll find more information about the organization and my mission on the website as well. What a story. I was truly inspired. Again, if you would like to help her in raising funds for the kids in Uganda and Kenya to pursue their education so that they will get a shot at life and realize what they had inside of them, just like you and I did. Or simply would love to follow her journey as she goes to the West, you can catch her again on her website at www.yanisho.com. For News Always On, I'm Castle. Have a wonderful Thursday and I'll see you tomorrow.